All right, guys. Hey, thank you for joining me. We are going to be looking at Joshua chapter 18 today, guys. So, uh, thank you guys for joining me, man. God's Word is so amazing, guys. It's um, so nourishing. It's so transformative. And, and it's so capable. Despite being written millennia ago, it is so capable of taking whatever problem that you are facing and addressing it in a way that so often feels like it was written exclusively for you and your moment and your struggle. And in a sense it was, because it is a living, breathing document. It, it, is, it, it is the breath of God in a form that we can take in and digest in our natural state. If that makes any sense, let me shut my big yam. Let's get into some prayer, and we're going to look at Joshua 18, guys. God bless you. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just want to come before you today, Lord. So grateful, so thankful, Lord, for you being who you are, God, despite everything else. Father God, thank you for this chance to utilize YouTube, Facebook, the internet, all of these things that can, and so often do, uh, find yourself employed in, in negative uses, but we can employ them for good. We can make use of them. We can utilize them to spread your word, your will, your way, your love out into this lost and fallen world, and we can go into every corner, Lord. Please help us to do that, Lord. Guide us in our work, Lord. Lead us in our life. Direct us in our soul's path, Lord, as we make our walk of faith through this world, moment by moment, day to day. Um, Father God, thank you for this chance, as I said, to come together. Please make it a nourishment to the flock and allow it to grab the attention of anyone else out there like I was for so long, lost to sin, lost to the flesh, still listening to the world, the lies of the enemy, and, 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 and secularness at large, Lord. Um, Heavenly Father, I pray for a blood covering over the hearts and minds and a hedge of protection around the lives of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Father God. Lord, I just want to lift my hands for a minute, Lord. Wherever you're at, guys, just take a moment and lift your hands up quietly to the Lord and just feel his presence. Feel his presence among us. Father God, we invite your love. We invite your anointing. We invite your, your presence into this moment of coming together over your word, Lord. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for all that you do, Father God. Guide us, lead us, direct us. And thank you, Father God. We pray all of this in your holy, heavenly, and mighty name. In Jesus' name. Amen, guys. All right. So, um, uh, let's look at Joshua 18, guys. I've really enjoyed this walk through here. And I'm not going to lie. It's got difficult over these last couple chapters to dig up a lot of stuff because we've had a lot of list and just real detailed information that it's hard to really dig up additional stuff on some of it but hopefully i've done a good job of that and let's go on joshua 18 guys the remainder of the land divided is the little heading on mine verse one let's go now the whole congregation of the children of israel assembled together at shiloh and set up the tabernacle of meeting there and the land was subdued before them, but there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes, which had not yet received their inheritance. Then Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long will you neglect to go and possess the land, which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? Pick out from among you three men for each tribe, and I will send them. They shall rise and go through the land, survey it according to their inheritance, and come back to me. 
and they shall divide it into seven parts. Judah shall remain in their territory on the south, and the house of Joseph shall remain in their territory on the north. You shall therefore survey the land in seven parts and bring the survey here to me, that I may cast lots for you here before the Lord our God. But the Levites have no part among you, for the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance. And Gad, Reuben, and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond the Jordan on the east, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them. Then the men arose to go away. And Joshua charged those who went to survey the land, saying, Go, walk through the land, survey it, and come back to me, that I may cast lots for you here before the Lord in Shiloh. So the men went, passed through the land, and wrote the survey in a book in seven parts by cities. And they came to Joshua at the camp in Shiloh. Then Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before the Lord. And there Joshua divided the land to the children of Israel according to their divisions. Now the lot of the tribe of the children of Benjamin came up according to their families. And the territory of their lot came out between the children of Judah and the children of Joseph. Their border on the north side began at the Jordan, and the border went up to the side of Jericho on the north, and went up through the mountains westward. It ended at the wilderness of Beth Avin. The border went over from there toward Luz, to the side of Luz, which is Bethel, southward. And the border descended to Ataroth Adad, near the hill that lies on the south side of lower Beth Haran. Then the border extended around the west side to the south from the hill that lies before Beth Horon southward, and it ended at Kirjath Baal, which is Kirjath Jerem, a city of the children of Judah. This was the west side. The south side began at the end of Kirjath Jerem, and the border extended on the west and went out to the spring of the waters of Nephthoah. Then the border came down to the end of the mountain that lies before the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is in the valley of the Rephaim on the north, descended to the valley of Hinnom, to the side of the Jebusite city on the south, and descended to Endrogal. And it went around from the north, went out to Enshamish, and extended toward Gililoth, which is before the ascent of Adomim, and descended to the stone of Bohan the son of Reuben. Then it passed along toward the north side of Arabah, and went down to Arabah. And the border passed along to the north side of beth Hogla. Then the border ended at the north bay at the Salt Sea at the south end of the Jordan. This was the southern boundary. The Jordan, the Jordan was its border on the east side. This was the inheritance of the children of Benjamin, according to its boundaries all around, according to their families. Now the cities of the tribe of the children of Benjamin, according to their families, were Jericho, beth Hoglah, and Mechaziz, beth Erebah, Zemaraim, Bethel, Avim, Para, Oprah, chephar Afni, and Gaba, twelve cities with their villages. Gibeon, Ramah, Beroth, Mizpah, Cherpraya, Moza, Rakim, Irpil, Tarala, Zela, Elif, Jebus, which is Jerusalem, Gibeath, and Kirjath, fourteen cities with their villages. This was the inheritance of the children of Benjamin according to their families. So, as I said, guys, a lot of the stuff here that we've been reading is extremely detailed accounts, which, if you're interested in stuff like that, and I know I am a lot of times, you can really go and type in some of the names and really do some digging and find some old maps. And, and it just, you know, time spent and all of that stuff, it can just enrich our understanding of, of the word and sort of provide us a better, a better mind's eye. It's like if someone were to describe something to you using north, south, east, and west, you can understand that. But if they could also describe it to you using the towns where you're from, and that's going to make it even more understandable. It's going to provide a, a, a picture that has more depth in your mind's eye. 
And that's the idea behind stuff like this, in my opinion. So, guys, let's flip back here. <clears throat> Thank you guys for coming along on this walk through God's Word. How wonderful it is to come together over our love and our need for Scripture. And that's exactly it. Not only do we love it, but we need it. It is the nourishment that, that is requisite to true spiritual life, to producing real spiritual fruit. We move along in our time here in Joshua with chapter 18 on our docket today. Over the course of today's chapter, as well as tomorrow's, chapter 19, we learn that at this point in the narrative, seven of Israel's twelve tribes were still yet to occupy land. In short, at least where these tribes are concerned, the land allocation process is not identical to what has come before. The land or territory not yet taken is surveyed and then split up into seven regions. At that point, with seven equally divided portions of land, lots are then cast to decide upon the allocation and which district will go to which chosen tribe. Let's look at verse 1, guys. Now the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of meeting there, and the land was subdued before them. So some background on Shiloh. This was a city located in Ephraim, a place as of yet insignificant in the history of Israel, and yet here, as we are told in Deuteronomy, it becomes the place where the Lord your God chooses. In the coming time of David, however, we will see a switch with Jerusalem as God's place of choice. And in this, with David's choice of this, it speaks to a rejection of, of Ephraim and Shiloh as its city, all in favor of Judah as a tribe and Jerusalem as a city. Here we also have a unique name for the tabernacle. We're told it's the tabernacle of meeting. Well, what, wait, what meeting? The meeting that they're talking about, the meeting in sight with a title like this, is that glorious meeting of God with his people, of, of, the, of the covenant makers with the covenant keeper, the creator and the created. Let's look at verse 2, guys. But there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. So often we refuse to accept God's commands, and what's really crazy is how often we also refuse to accept God's promises. These seven tribes were right there along with the others of the twelve for the battles. They were part and parcel to the enemy's defeat, and yet of the twelve, Seven exhibit hesitancy in laying claim to that which God has promised. In all of this, we again see excellence on Joshua's behalf as he provides honest, practical guidance, offering help so as to foster obedience among the people toward God Almighty. Amen? Let's look at verse 3. Then Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? Will you neglect, or more literally, be slack? How long will you be slack? God, Joshua, any, any leader or father, like any disrespected father, we see here is begging that age-old question of when? When are you going to do something? When are you going to get up off of the couch? When are you going to get up off of your butt, Israel, and do what I have said? Here, possess has a bit more depth than what we would understand the word to mean, and in fact means to occupy the land in total. This differs greatly from that initial conquest. The possession sought here is an act of obedience, devotion, and faith, all founded exclusively on the promises of God, and that's why there's a touch of rebuke shaded by, by exacerbation in Joshua's question. Let's look at verse 5, guys. And they shall divide it into seven parts. 
Judah shall remain in their territory on the south, and the house of Joseph shall remain in their territory on the north. So the house of Joseph, or in other words, the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, both those east and west of the Jordan. Look at verse 6, guys. You shall therefore survey the land in seven parts and bring the surveys here to me, that I may cast lots for you here before the Lord our God. So, in our author's language, we see how the presence of God finds its earthly representation in the tabernacle, recalling the ark's design and that elsewhere in Scripture, God speaks to Moses from where? from between the two cherubim. Atop the ark's golden lid sat these two heavenly hosts, and between them, we are told, one who was close enough could actually witness this beautiful, shimmering cloud. And what was that? That was the Shekinah glory of God. The very, the very divine glory of God in a sort of earthly manifestation, a type of theophany, if you will, like, like the burning bush or other places in Scripture that we could look at. Um, let's look at... So the next thing I have to share on you is actually on that whole final section that in my Bible is titled The Land of Benjamin. So from verse 11 all the way to verse 28 there at the end, let's talk about that for a minute. So we draw to a close on chapter 18... With this, as from verse 11 on, we learn of the tribe of Benjamin, one of Israel's smallest. They were given an allocation of land between two giants in the world of Israel, Judah and Ephraim. The idea here was that the Benjamite people and the Benjamite land would serve as a buffer of sorts, offering a geographical breakwater between these two dominant tribes, right? <clears throat> Let's look at verse um, 28. I've got a little thing I want to share with you on that. And that's going to be it for it today, guys. Thank you so much for always letting me share God's word with you, man. I appreciate it so much, guys. Um, all right, so let's look at 28. Zelah, Eleph, Jebus, which is Jerusalem, Gibeath, and kirjath Jerem, or Kirjath. Fourteen cities with their villages. This was the inheritance of the children of Benjamin according to their families. So, just some extra facts. Elif, this city is mentioned only here in all of Scripture. Okay? Also, we have this town here, Jebus? 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 This is yet another name for Jerusalem. Man, Jerusalem was like New York or something. It was the city of a million names, right? We, we see it as Salem, we see it as Jerusalem, we see it here as Jebus, countless names, right? Um, but anyways, yes, Jebus is just another moniker for Jerusalem. All right, guys, hey, man, if you're not subscribed, smash that subscribe button. I drop a new video like this six days a week, guys, and I promise, man, Father God loves it when we're in his word. Not only that, guys, but it's where you're going to find victory. It's where you're going to find um a productive life, you're going to find peace, joy, happiness, whatever it is, break out your thesaurus, look for all the things in life that you want to be able to say about your life, this is going to be what produces that, if it's worthwhile, this produces it, if it's God's, this will help produce it, this guides us, it leads us, it comforts us, it, it directs us, it, everything guys, um, and so that's why I'm so grateful to have this time to share God's word with you guys. That's what he wants from us. He wants us to take time every day for prayer, for fellowship. Take time every day to get to know him better. And that's how we do that. It's time in this beautiful love letter to humanity that God has provided to each and every one of us. And what a blessing it is. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, guys. Share it if you loved it. If you have any prayer requests, any comments, anything like that at all, guys, please feel free to drop that down here into the comment section. And hey, if you guys don't have a Bible, maybe, and you need a Bible, I don't know how we'll do it, but we'll do it. We'll get a Bible to you. I'll get a Bible to you somehow. You just contact me down here or whatever. We'll figure it out because God's Word is how we get it done, guys. You will defeat the enemy's strongholds. 
Um, you will defeat drugs, alcohol, greed, selfishness, um, 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 perverted desires and ambitions. All of that will fall to the wayside under the pressure of the glorious word of God and the transformative blood of Jesus Christ. Um, I love you guys. Father God loves you even more, man. Check it out, guys. Go out there and have a blessed day, you guys. Tell somebody how much Jesus loves them. All right?